This week on the Steampunk Desperado channel, the truth about Comicsgate. Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. This is a place where we talk about that most wonderful of science fiction subgenres, steampunk. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about a fictional medium. We're also we're going to talk about comics again, but we're going to talk about something that isn't steampunk but is still near and dear to my heart. We're going to talk about Comics Gate. Now, brief history. A while back, a few years ago, uh, there was a big uproar and hoopla in the gaming community, the video gaming community to be specific. And uh, there was a particular creator uh, called Zoe Quinn who who um, had written a game called Depression Quest, which uh, from the name from the name it sounds like it's kind of weird, right? So it got was critically acclaimed by all the game gaming press, gaming industry press, but the players hated it, and people began been um, thinking that maybe the gaming press was corrupt. Maybe they were just giving Zoe Quinn all these accolades because she was a woman. And of course, when they said this, that meant, you know, the media went crazy saying it had proved that they were a bunch of sexist trolls. So, a few years later, a few years later, we have a similar situation. Donald Trump is elected president and a lot of people in the media are having hysterics. And in the among the forefront of those people that are going crazy about it are the artists and creators of Marvel Comics. And uh, the few creators that who dared to come out as Republican or perhaps not support this hysteria about Trump were blacklisted and uh, called Nazis. <laughs> so, you know, not anything too unusual, but you know, there are a lot of people who were, it kind of galvanized the fans because a lot of them were pretty much sick of being preached at. And it, a lot of the uh, comics had become very far left in tone and uh, they were replacing the old characters with um, you know, people of color and, and uh, gays and lesbians and transgender and Muslims and, and all these um, diverse type of people. Nothing wrong with having that sort of heroes. The issue was that they were replacing existing heroes for the crime of being straight white males. There was a lot of criticism online, especially on YouTube and, and blogs, and some of these people became, naturally the media figured that they were racist and sexist and that was why, but in reality it was just kind of a fan backlash. It was a, cre it was a consumer revolt. So I'm going to talk about four specific creators in the comics gate movement. What I like about them and why you should check them out too. So first guy is, um, called, is a fellow called Ethan Van Skyver. He, in the 1990s, he had a comic series called Cyber Frog. It's about this anthropo anthropomorphic frog who um, is kind of a warrior and he saves humans even though he says he doesn't like them. Now, Van Skyver also did Green Lantern series at DC, and but because he came out as a Republican, he was kind of blacklisted and demonized, and ended up going back independent, crowdfunding his new Cyber Frog series, and uh, it was spectacularly successful. And he does a channel, uh, Comic Artist Pro Secrets, where he used to do a lot of critiquing of new of new artists, which was you know very wonderful and you know helping new people, but with all the politics, he's gotten more and more into just pushing back at the people who call him evil and so on, and promoting Cyberfrog. I wasn't able to get a copy of the new Cyberfrog. I forgot to to uh, contribute to it, and it was impossible to find another copy. These guys really need, when they crowdfund this stuff, they really need to produce a generic version for those of us who missed the boat maybe uh, electronic or something like that, because I really, I really need to get on the next one so I can get one of the newer Cyber Frogs. It's very, like, kind of crazy 90s style art, you know, very colorful, a um, lot of crazy action. Uh, the writing, the humor is kind of very timely, you know, like jokes about Tito Jackson and so on. 
so it doesn't hold up as well. But it's still a good, it's good action adventure. So next creator, um, John De La Rose. I talked about him in my top eight steampunk comics. He um, successful science fiction writer, more or less independent, but he came out for Donald Trump. Oh my God, that's horrific. <laughs> we can't have we can't have that. And uh, he ended up getting banned from. Bacon, which in his hometown, the kind of science fiction convention. I mean, it's crazy. I just talk about the intolerance of it all. So not only did he come out with his own uh, novels, but he has comics. And this one called Flying Sparks, also crowdfunded. I did get on this one because I follow his blog. And this is, um, I forget her name, but she's a superhero and she's in love with a supervillain. And uh, it's in our secret identities. So it's kind of like they don't know what's going on but at, at, you know they're at odds. It's, it's some pretty good art, pretty good art. Um, and, uh, and here's the supervillain. And uh, it's a different artist from what he did from his steampunk comic, Jethro Morales. It says. Anyway, it's it's pretty good. It, it's a good it's good writing, and uh, I think I think you should check him out too. Next one. This is a guy that has um, had a YouTube channel, or still does. It, it usually was it was originally called Diversity and Comics. Now it's called Comics Matter. And this is a guy. He's a an Iraq War veteran, a long time, you know, lifetime comic fan. He comes back from overseas, and he discovers that comics have become kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Very SJW, very social justice warrior, very, uh, very talky. People sit around and talk about their feelings. There's not so much action. Like people who, you know, went into superhero comics as kids, they wanted the action. They wanted the villains. They wanted the heroes. They wanted the excitement. They didn't want to be preached at about injustice. And, and I mean, there was that. Of course, there's, you know, Superman stands for truth, justice, and the American way. But there wasn't that much of it. It wasn't like shoved down your throat. So he, they challenged him to make his own comic, and he did, and uh, called Jawbreakers. It's about a bunch of uh, retired superheroes, and they go to Africa, and they're, they're like um, fighting warlords, and they're trying to save this uh, giant ape from being killed. And it's funny because once he got his comic, um, ready to go with Antarctic Press, a guy from Marvel um, uh, called Mark Wade called up and said, "Call up this Antarctic Press place and say you don't want to work with him. He's a Nazi." Uh, really? <laughs> really? No, no, no. This is these are diverse characters. He's a he's a good guy. He's got nothing against gays or anybody. He really doesn't. His big crime was referring to a transgender creator as a diversity hire because he said this person didn't get any work until that she came out as a woman and suddenly she's got all these jobs because of identity politics so mark wade tries to kind puts the kibosh on his his publishing deal which is essentially it's a it's an actionable tort it's so it's it's called um what is it called tortious interference and so um Zach, or AKA his real name, Richard Meyer, is suing Mark Wade for this. And in the meantime, he put together his own publishing company, published it himself at great expense and work. But he, uh, again, crowdfunded, was successful. And it's, it's a good comic. It's fun. It's like, it's like, you know, yay, yay, superheroes. And that kind of thing. It's action. It's not all this talking like some of these. If you like talking in a comic, fine. But you may want, you may want adventure. You may want characters that are a little sexy, but that's not a good thing either these days. <laughs> because uh, you can't, you can't have female characters that make men happy. No, no, you can't. <laughs> so I, I, I support that guy too. That was a crowdfund. And I really, really like his channel. He's like a regular guy and he just, he just talks common sense and uh, makes fun of uh, leftist crazies. So I really like him. 
all these first three guys are just, they're basically just conservatives, they're basically just generic Republicans who get, who got a little salty at times, which you can't do in the present day. If you're, if you're a Republican, you can't get salty. You have to, you have to be very apologetic. Um, and it's only allowed to liberals who can, who can make, leftists can make death threats online to people and not suffer any consequences. You know, a uh, conservative makes fun of somebody's appearance and they're banned from Twitter. Go figure. This, but this fourth guy I'm going to talk about, now, he is a radical. He is a radical and you might not like his viewpoints, but I'm going to talk about him anyway because I think he's a, is a creative genius. And uh, I, think, I think his stuff's worth looking into as well. The guy's name is um, Theodore Beal and uh, his his nom de plume is Vox Dei, I believe that's Latin for voice of God. So he's a little bit narcissistic, perhaps. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people would consider him, you know, a lot of the lefties would consider him a fascist. If you read his blog, he's a separatist. He believes that different ethnicities can't get along, really. It's hopeless. I'm not that pessimistic, but um, he's definitely written some good things about fighting back against um, social justice warrior attacks, how to handle that, how to handle being demonized for your political opinions. So it's, that's, that book's called SJW's Always Lie, and it's very much worth checking out. His comic series that he came out with, and I don't have a physical copy, I have the e-copy, uh, was called Alt Hero, which is a very cool premise. Now, unlike these other three who made their comics explicitly non-political, he bit, went very political. And the idea behind Alt Hero is that they have these um, official government supported globalist uh, superheroes um, led by Captain Europa, who is this uh, basically this buffoon, this very arrogant buffoon who wears the EU flag on his uniform. And they're opposed by this kind of independent, patriotic, populist style heroes, including including a, a young gal who wears like a confederate flag as part of her mask. Oh my god, that's horrible. Uh, this little southern belle. Can't, can't have that. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a good adventure. And he's done some other stuff as well, including uh, Quantum Mortis, one of his previous sci-fi novels. He's adapting that to comics. It's kind of a sci-fi detective story. Pretty, pretty entertaining. I love the 1940s style of the art on this. Uh, you know, kind of square-jawed looking people. And so that's entertaining and not particularly political. And another really interesting thing he does, he got the rights to uh, the works of P.G. Wodehouse. Uh, perhaps they're in the public domain, I don't know. But uh, some kind of droll British humor. of, uh, And it's uh, basically right-ho Jeeves. And it's about this... Uh, kind of he, this character, Jeeves is the butler, that saves this guy's butt all the time. He's like this kind of uh, aristocratic um, layabout who's always, you know, getting drunk and messing with women and it's kind of funny. I think it's good and it's especially good that they're, they're exposing uh, Wodehouse, a, a new generation to, to writers like Wodehouse, which is pretty cool. So in conclusion, I think um, Comicsgate, is, Comicsgate creators are worth checking out. They're not fascists. They're not haters. And even though some of them might be a little radical, at least one of the ones in this group, um, there's nothing wrong with these people. They're, they're good people. And the reason I support Comicsgate is because it favors free expression. It's not about, it's not about bigotry because they're not bigots. It's not about harassment because they don't harass people. So, uh, in, uh, regardless of the false accusations that, that you hear from, you know, mainstream creators. And uh, let me know if you like this content, if you want to see more of it. And uh, I'd also appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. That really helps us a lot, out a lot. So for now, this is Vaughn Troy, the Steampunk Desperado, saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.